I like walking in to do the show. It makes me feel like I'm... I don't know what it makes. It just like the way it feels. Just show you some things and talk about some things with the Handycam. Our Patreon members, they get uh, regular, you know, like updates here in the office, just random things to, to show them what we're doing with the Patreon money and just some of our plans on the inside. But we also wanted to show you this set because it's pretty much complete. What we wanted to show you is that we have been kind of adding to our set here. As you can see, we've expanded out. We built this nice little Kia thing. This just appeared recently. Oh, how exciting. Lovely. All kinds of cool stuff. We can see all of our books, like role-playing books and Lego pieces and stuff like that. And we wanted this set to kind of be a reflection of our personalities. So a lot of you on the, our Patreon viewers have already actually seen the behind the scenes stuff. So anyway, uh, you're up here on the top shelf. The Gaben thing, we've got to move that out of there, even though I do like Gaben. I, I just don't know how he got there because I didn't put him there. I didn't put him there either. Gronda was one of the first 3D RPGs on the PC, and it's really basic. Back there's Crondor. Uh, very interesting story. If you can handle the graphics and the gameplay, it might be fun to play. And then, you know, I, I realized that Raymond Feist over here had uh, written some Crondor books, and I thought that the games were made from the books at first, and then I realized that no, he just liked the story, or they liked the story, or they hired him or something, but these are made based upon the story of the game. So yeah, books from the game, interesting mm -hmm. there. And we've got Xena down here, we got for $2 at the thrift store. Yes, Harem Xena with the pillar of power. And the hammer pants. Yeah. <laughs> hammer pants Xena right there. I think it's time to shoot the crit show. I, I kind of want this show to be a little bit more fun. I'm feeling like it was kind of going into like the Tech Junior area. So we're still gonna cover topics, but we're gonna grab the, uh, the camcorder, run around and do some more silly things and make this more of the crit show rather than the Tech Junior. Cause we might be in talks about bringing the tech back but that's only going to be if we can uh, facilitate it correctly. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about the big thing, and that is the AMD uh, Ryzen benchmarks are out. I actually sold all my stock after reading like the first 10 articles this morning around 7 in the morning. I was like, oh shit, and I sold all my stock because I realized everyone was trashing it because of the gaming performance. And I think there's a lot of uh, people out there who are always looking for a way to trash AMD, and I think they're missing the point of this CPU. And I do want to come out and say yes, it is not the CPU to end all CPUs for gaming. It's a $500 part that is usually not as fast as the i7 parts from the last couple of generations when you talk about the mainstream stuff like Cabby Lake and I mean even Haswell it competes with that but um i5s are still very competitive and that's you know several hundred dollars less expensive. This part was to dethrone the x99 stuff and it's funny because I see all the reviewers out there with the crazy expensive thousand dollar Intel stuff that does not compete with the two and three hundred dollar Intel stuff all the time when it comes to gaming, especially not in the price and performance range, but they just praise and praise and praise because they're really good for productivity. Well, guys, this is now the Cinebench King. It's really good for productivity. It's really good for rendering. It's really good for people who are running, you know, game dev rigs, Maya, Three Studio Max. Guys, this is a great CPU for five hundred bucks. But if you focus on specifically gaming, you're missing the point of this new Ryzen. Uh, 1800x and even the 1700 and the 1700x having said that there there are some games that it just doesn't perform like it should it like makes me scratch my head um, and i don't have a copy of civ 6 and i wish i did to test it out because that was one game that i was seeing some really weird results from the other uh, reviewers out there still the bottom line for me is that this is a really nice cpu for productivity and it does dethrone um the the 6900 when it comes to price to performance ratio and there's gonna be a lot of interesting things. If you want just specifically gaming, i5, still really good idea. That's what everyone's gonna be recommending. Uh, if you wanna do gaming and multitasking, i7 or possibly the new Ryzen chip. But guys, stay tuned for the upcoming Ryzen parts. These are not the only three CPUs. We're also gonna have some quad cores and some hex cores coming out, maybe around, uh, I'm, not, I'm guessing May or so. So watch for those, cause those might be very interesting for games. If they, you know, up the frequency a little bit, and lower the price a little bit they could be very competitive with the i5 it's still a hell of a cpu and welcome back amd it's great to have you all right moving right along if you guys want to talk about that even you know more head over to our forum and there's a lot of people in there talking about this and providing some interesting knowledge going back and forth and remember uh, uh fuquin is a master at this stuff anyway all right so the 94 year old guy who um 
invented lithium ion batteries, has not been working with solid state batteries, and he, at 94 years old, has come up with a breakthrough to, I guess, help fast charging and adding tons of capacity to these solid state batteries. Now, the thing about solid state batteries, um, you guys can read the article here if you want to get into all the nerdy stuff. Solid state batteries are way safer than lithium ion batteries, so that's already a bonus. Um, but it's been difficult to, you know, I guess, produce these things in mass quantity. So some of his breakthroughs may help in that way. But the bottom line is, is you can make a battery that's under, I guess, 200 kilograms, which is around somewhere around 400 pounds, 300 something pounds, 390, I don't know, somewhere in that range. But you can make a battery that's about that heavy that will power your car for 200 plus miles. Not bad for, you know, driving around town. Um, anyway, I'm not sure if this solid state technology will be the best for replacing the batteries in your phones and stuff, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. But I mainly just wanted to say that it's amazing that, you know, a 94 year old dude is still in it. Usually people are like, oh, the creative people are like 30, 40. And then after that, they just kind of settle down and breathe funny. Speaking of technology, Bill Gates uh, actually sat down with Elon Musk and had a chit chat in China. A chit chat in China. That's going to be the movie that they make about their endeavors. So anyway, in China, there was a um, conference going on about, you know, just efficient energy conservation and that sort of thing. And I also want to note that uh, the recent initiatives, China's now at the top of the game when it comes to working for solar and just renewable energies and that sort of thing. I think it's kind of funny that they're going in that direction because they're, they have a ton of pollution, mostly because of the population. They are quite an efficient country, but just overpopulation, overcrowding, and that sort of thing. And then kind of here, we're slightly sliding in the opposite direction. So instead of they, they could pool their resources together and work together, they both got their hands full doing other things that they would create some initiatives to push renewable energy, solar. Uh, right here is a quote from Bill Gates. We need some invention, perhaps miracle batteries or super safe nuclear or making the sun into gasoline directly. Those technologies, a lot of them are in place, but they said, you know, the wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine. But even with clouds out there, you can still uh, yield about 80% of the, the power coming through there. So they're just going in that direction, you know, like trying to make the world a more livable place. And if they were to pull their resources together, they could probably do a lot. Um, and there, there's probably a lot of R&D that their money could fund. And I think that they are, two could do it, probably with Bill Gates as more of the, the head of that. But I'm kind of curious to know what you think. And a lot of people, every time you mention Bill Gates, they're like, oh yeah, Bill Gates, he's working on all this technology to exterminate half the population. Yeah, I wonder uh, how they'll spend that. Grab some t-shirts, guys. The new Mars t-shirt is there. It's just a cool design. We're going to be doing more like just cool designs here. Like there's, there it is on the screen. Should we show them a little bit about how a design is made here? Yeah. Let's roll it. Here, here's cool. how Here's how we make a design. What you draw in there, Logan? This is how we make t-shirt ideas. Come take a look at this. Can, okay. you, see, can you see this crap? Let's take a look and see what we got here. <laughs> this is what we give to someone who actually has talent. The NSA helicopter right there. Oh, yeah. And, oh yeah, I need to put a roof access thing. So let's get a roof access that thing H? going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is the roof access door. Wow, that's a pretty good roof access hatch. <laughs> I don't draw those very often, so I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. There's the door. Where's the Where's the H for the helicopter landing pad? Okay, though? we'll get a helicopter landing pad here. I'll draw a perfect go. circle. Oh. Let's make it a block H. Wow. This is gonna be in the MoMA. <laughs> <laughs> There's even a lot of art, <laughs> bitches. So now what we're going to do is, um, we've always been talking about saving the bears, but I think the bears are the ones that need to save us sometimes. We're going to have a bunch of agents here fighting uh, with several city bear types. They're just bears that are in the city, I guess. But As opposed to country bears? There's no difference in city bears and country bears other than the accent. The we're going to have bears here fighting. Okay, I'm going to draw, draw a bear right now because I've never yeah. really drawn one before. Let's see. This is a bear arm right here. How do you draw a bear head? Um... Like a dog head, but more bear-like. Perfect. There's little legs dangling down here. <laughs> Why is he so long? <laughs> so yeah, he's <laughs> he's getting it. It's a pretty good mm. bear for your first time drawing a bear. Mm. Like if you presented me that picture and were like, hey Justin, what's this a picture of? I'd be like, that's a bear. <laughs> I think. Sun. Like they've been fighting all day. Yeah. Uh, the sun, how is that the sun? It's actually a fat spider. I, I'm see, okay, I'm lazy, I've noticed when I draw. So when I try to draw windows, I get like down around here, then I'm like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> like, I'm like, what, just, Two straight just, lines see, is enough. I just always I don't do this thing when I draw fancy. windows, so I just like, I, there we go. It's like, go down, down, and then back, and that's fuck it. So there we I go. I would love to see a building you design put into <laughs> actual. <laughs> There's like, go down left, and then just curve the rest of it, because I can't be bothered, to, I can't be fuckered, fuckered to, to do this little okay. piece right there. You just make them look like D's. <laughs> D's windows. D's windows right here. Nope. 
stay tuned for this one, guys. Yeah. All right, so uh, be watching for that design pretty soon on the store. All right, moving right along. Now, this is an interesting idea from a, um, a website over in Norway. In order to comment on their website, you now have to take a quiz to make sure that you've actually read the content before you jump in to the comments. Why didn't we think about this on YouTube? Because there's always these guys who show up, guys or girls, and it's just, they show up in the comments and they immediately say, they see that they read the title and maybe watch the first five seconds and then they jump down there and start like yelling and screaming at each other, calling someone an idiot. And a lot of times, you know, if they watch the whole video, they'd see that whatever they're complaining about was actually covered, but they just jump in and comment because they want to sound smart on the internet. And this is a way to just reduce the trolling and just people who, again, run around the internet trying to sound smart in front of their friends. We, why can't we do this on the comment system in YouTube? You have to make it, you have to, from now on, you have to, if you're going to come in and talk smack, you've got to answer a couple of questions to prove that you've actually watched the content. That'd be a fun idea. YouTube would never go for it because YouTube's a, a machine to keep cranking out more hits and more comments and stuff like that. But interesting idea. I'm not uh, sure what the downsides would be, but if you guys have some ideas of what the downsides of this would be, let us know in the comments below. Okay, so the FCC has a new chair, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually miss Tom Wheeler. He was the fox in the hen house uh, back when he took over the FCC, and then he did a bunch of things to help preserve net neutrality and just make the, the playing ground more even. Well, we've got a new FCC chair, and he does not seem to give a shit about any of us and our rights, our privacy, and he doesn't seem to care about net neutrality whatsoever. In fact, he wants to move the uh, FCC away from policing our security and net neutrality and all that sort of thing and move and move it back over to the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, because he wants the um, quote unquote, the security rules to just sort of be like a baseline across everything. Um, so, yeah, people being able to harvest your data and stuff. Right. There was a there was a rule about to take take uh, action where, you know, if someone wanted to harvest your data, they had to at least inform you and that sort of thing. But that's going to be removed. So now they can just continue to harvest all your data and uh, just watch this guy, because in the coming months, what we're going to see him do, he's going to start to erode net neutrality and start to give all that back to the corporations so that they can say, well, you know what? This content has priority over this content. This is going to be throttled. This is going to be faster because these guys are giving us money and these guys aren't. So they're going to start collecting from you guys at home because you're paying for your internet subscription. And they're going to start collecting from the different websites out there who eat up bandwidth. So they're making money in both ends. It's really good for the consumer, really good for the, uh, the company's really bad for the consumers. That's the way of it. Just watch for that soon. Sorry, the rest of the world, because we're going to be a bad example for you when we end up with our, you know, cable, uh, or our packages that are like cable TV, our internet packages that are just like cable. All right, a couple of gaming articles here. Torn Banner Studios, the guy that made Chivalry. They got a brand new game coming out called Mirage, and it looks a lot like Chivalry, except with a whole high fantasy element, magic and ridiculous stuff like that. More classes, and it's really brutal. And I think it looks like one of the most fun games of the year. I wasn't really looking forward to Overwatch as much as I'm looking forward to this game here because these games are just on another level when it comes to visceral brutality. So Mirage, starting on March 27th, is going to be in beta. And if you grab the uh, the game down here for 29 bucks, the standard edition, you'll be able to play the beta game until the full game comes out. So you can go ahead and jump in now and start, you know, goofing around in the game. If you have no idea what this is, it's a first-person combat uh, well, first-person slasher, FPS, first-person slasher, sword and shield, with magic elements. I think it looks awesome, and uh, if anybody from, from Torn Banner is watching, what's up, guys? We love your games. Could you get us some keys so we can play it here in the studio and stream it? Maybe some to give away to the audience, too. That'd be amazing. All right, thanks very much. All right, last article of the day, Amazon and Twitch. You know, they, they bought out Twitch, and uh, they've been working on some initiatives to put all this together, and they're going to start selling video games directly on Twitch and extra video game content for Twitch. I'm not sure what that exactly means. Maybe it's going to be add-ons, expansions, hats, or whatever. So you'll be able to, it's basically going to integrate the Amazon store experience right with the page. And they're going to give 5% to the the Twitch streamer, only 5%. And then 70% uh, goes to the publisher of the game or whatever. And then the rest is going to go to Amazon. I'm like Amazon, why couldn't you just take like 20% and then let the guys have 10%? Come on, give them a little bit bigger of a cut because people are getting there through that portal. I mean, 5%, it's, I guess it's something. 
and I guess they'll take it, but come on, 10%, you guys can do it. It'll be a huge incentive for people to stream and use the service even more. Amazon's doing a few more things. While we were at the NVIDIA event, we took a look at something called Lumberyard, and that's a new game development engine. It's actually the CryEngine, and uh, Lumberyard comes in, takes the CryEngine, and it adds some Amazon features. It actually looks really, really good. It looks good. But um, they're gonna add Twitch as, as an integrated component of this game development engine. And I am expecting, since Twitch is gonna work this way, it'll all work together with the Amazon store and Amazon's gonna have, Amazon's gonna have this big video game system. And then watch for a platform like Steam from them because that's probably the next step in my opinion. Anyway, that's it for today's show. What's this? Oh, no, I got an inbox question. That's not it for today. Okay, first inbox question of the day and only inbox question of the day is from Matthias. Matthias, all right, what's up Matthias? He says, are there any collaborations with fellow YouTubers or should I call them influencers in the works? Wendell's the elephant in the room here. W Wendell? That, I told you that guy that came in, or that thing that came in, the elephant, I told you that was a costume, not an actual elephant. I knew the elephant in the room was him. So, uh, <laughs> but I think your humor might fit Paul and Kyle. I'd definitely like to see a weekly or bi-weekly show between them and you. Uh, I'll be frank with you here, I'll be working on the video game a lot because we have the Kickstarter coming up. Um, and I won't have time to do um, as many shows. I'll be doing a lot of just... What we're going to do really is we're going to start doing cool shit and documenting it. Um, whereas you've seen a lot of our recent videos have been more of the like, here's the process of us putting this ridiculous thing together. Here's the process of us benchmarking it and not so much the guy behind a desk, you know, like presenting everything. I want to try to step a little bit back from that. Everyone else has that covered to death. You know, we might have been one of the first people out there doing it, but now it's time to step back and just have fun and enjoy ourselves, work on crazy projects with hardware, work on crazy projects with games and software, and then document all that stuff for you guys. So I'm not sure if I'll have a lot of time to do these shows, but I would like to work together with them on some, some content if I'm ever in the area, if they're ever in the area. I'll definitely put that out there. And we did have a, a bit of fun at, um, you know, the NVIDIA event this this last week. So you'll you'll see some of that in the upcoming vlog. So be on the watch on the watch on the watch out i said look out watch out whatever it is be on the watch out for that all right so that's it for today's show get a shirt or something one of these guys i don't know if we got any more of these left but yeah get a shirt over there in the store those are awesome got some new stuff coming in oh oh yes i ordered some secret things from uh, yes you're gonna like them i can't tell them yet because i'm always like making sure that everyone else doesn't steal my thunder and order things before i do when i order things but they're not a shirt very handy tools and stuff like that for you guys so we're going to have a lot of interesting things in the store soon. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. We'll see you on the forum.